So now I just gotta figure out how to get to that valve cover. I mean, there just isn't a whole lot of room. All these things, you know, I gotta get in between the frame rails here. There's the spark plug, the regulator rectifier. It doesn't seem like it gets a whole lot of air right here. And when you make a bike a track bike, because you don't have headlights running, the uh, regulator rectifier, this guy has to work way harder. And as a result, they tend to fail at a higher frequency. So a lot of times you try to relocate them someplace where they get more airflow. This little shroud around here is actually pretty awesome. The, a lot of people pull these off because they think, oh, wait, but it funnels a lot of air into your radiator. A lot of like the race bikes will have huge ones of these things to pull air from all around the front of the bike to push it through the radiator. You know, especially bikes that live on racetracks, they just spin high RPMs. They're under load all the time. It's not like we're just like droning down a freeway where things are just kind of like idling and spinning around. But track life is a hard life. All right, so I can remember how this all goes back together. It's way easier than back in the days before cell phones when you just like drew a picture. That was a lot of work to get that out of there. Look at that thing. It was just like wrapped and snaked around everything. Should we lay odds on if I put this thing back in? All right, now that we got that rubber bladder out of the way, there's actually a fair bit of room in here. I don't think this is gonna be that bad. Spark plugs right there, four bolts. I don't think this is gonna be that big of a deal. Randy was right, as Randy always is. Look at that, that's a nice, happy little spark plug right there. Look at that, that's just a piece of plastic. Jeez, weight savings. So when you adjust the valves, whenever you do anything to it, you, you basically want to put everything in top dead center. So that's what we're doing here. Right, we're looking in this window for the little hash mark to line up with that little pointy thing. And that puts us at top dead center. That's a timing mark. Come on, there it goes. Gentle, don't force things. I'm hoping that this will be just an inspection, which is, Always what you hope for with the valve adjustment, you're not actually adjusting anything, you just inspect it. Because inspect it, you measure it, and then you just put it back together. There we go. Valve cover. Dirty little valve cover. TT, it says it's a top dead center. So if you've never adjusted valves on a motorcycle, basically what happens? is the valve seat. The valve comes up, hits the bottom of the seat, it wears. And if a valve is tight, that means the, the valve isn't allowed to close all the way. The valve is then held open. Once the valve is being held open, you get blow-by, and blow-by just wears everything out really fast. That's why when I adjust valves, I always adjust my valves to the loose end of the adjustment. All right, so unfortunately, all the valves are tight, all four of them. We can go get uh, smaller shims and move that adjustment back to the loose end of the spectrum and make sure that the bike can make it to the next valve adjustment. All right, so I always like to take a photo of the timing marks, just in case. This doesn't always work, but it's worth a shot. I'll zip tie the chain to the cam in the right gear. This keeps the chain from slipping on the cam, just in case. So I basically just take the cam and I just roll it out of the way. And the zip tie kind of helps hold it on. Just a simple little notebook to kind of pay attention or keep track of where they are in the bike. All right, so now let's go grab the intake ones. My original measurement, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.12, 0 0.13. Then the shim that was in the engine, 2.38, 2.40, 2.36, 2.30, my desired clearance, what the difference is, and the shim I need to replace it. This one needs a 2.34, I don't have a 2.34, 2.37, I have a 2.36, 2.31, I have a 2.30, 2.26, I don't have one of those. So I can move shims around to minimize which shims I need to trade. And this is the most terrifying part of this whole thing. 
is you do not want to ever drop a shim down into your motor. It is absolutely terrifying. And see how scary that is? Oh, don't drop it. Come on. Oh, and there she is. Shim in place. We'll put the rock arm back down in place. Like, never ever just do one and then the other. Like, you work them all down in. And the manual says to you work with these, and you get them all kind of seated, you do the middle ones and the outside ones. And the valves are adjusted. And while that's a fairly big task, it's, it's something that needs to be done to pretty much every used bike I've ever bought. And it's a regular maintenance item. It, it's not overly complicated, but there's a lot of steps involved and a lot of opportunities to really cock it up. Oh, cock. Now next time, well, next time is going to be exciting and miserable. I'll be diving into one of the worst jobs I know of, fitting race bodywork. It's, it's, there's no other way to say it. It sucks, and, and I think I've made it even worse for myself because I, I took a chance on a set of bodywork from an unusual source, something I've always been curious about. I have no idea how it's going to go, but if I can make it work, if I can, if I can pull this off, I think we're gonna end up with one really smart looking RC390 track bike. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Ride on and ride well.